So if you didn't see, I'm gonna to try to waste as little of your time as possible. We have the patch notes for the 2.4 patch, which should be going live in just a couple hours, or if you're watching this later, went live on April 14th. There are a lot of things to go over in here, but I think they could get boiled down pretty minutely so that you don't have to spend your time reading through everything. One, the patch notes include everything that was available in the PTR, and then specifies when they changed from the PTR and anything that was new. One of the biggest announcements, and yes, I'm going to go ahead and shamelessly plug the fact that I'm part of this, uh, is the Infernal Race. So there is going to be an official race at the beginning of Ladder Start that is going to include racers from North America, Europe, Australia, shout outs to Kano, my boy, and Korea at the beginning of Ladder Start. So while we're still waiting on some of the specifics, some of the names that you'll see up, you probably know a couple of these fine individuals. And then on top of that, myself and BT Neanderthal are actually going to be your English casters for the event. So for the entirety of the event, you're gonna be listening to us gabber on about how the eight player runs work, the different things they're gonna be doing, how the competition is wrapping up, and everything that you would need to know to understand how the eight player meta evolves and how the speed run has evolved to get that world first hell bail kill. Now enough self promo. Again, thank you so much to Blizzard for including me in this and the Diablo team. I'm super, super excited, but let's get into what the class changes are. And I made myself a handy dandy notepad. Bada bing, bada boom. From the things that we could see, because it's not highlighted, you had to already know what the changes were to find out what the new changes are. So Blade Fury, the skill for assassins, is going to gain attack rating per level. So it looks like at skill level 20, you're gonna have 200 plus attack rating on the skill. Whereas during the PTR, it was only a flat 10% attack rating increase with one point in the skill and nothing else. For the Barbarian, Whirlwind has two big changes that are coming to it for functionality. One, a character will only Whirlwind to the target. So it used to be that if you Whirlwind onto a target and that target ran away, you would follow them forever. Uh, shout outs to the video where Teo pulled me from Luke Galane to Lost City in a Whirlwind. Now you're going to Whirlwind to the location they had when you clicked it. So no longer getting pulled along like a very angry Nordic dog on a very short leash. The second thing is that Whirlwind will now activate on adjacent targets. So previously you would just do a melee attack if a target was right next to you and you were to right click them. But it looks like now you will at least have a short duration Whirlwind that'll go over them. So it might have a minimum length if you do not select a distance or it might just do the first four frames of the Whirlwind. We'll have to test that out. Leap Attack has two major bonuses coming to it. One, the AOE damage on the skill is going to see an increase. It's going to scale better in the late game. And then on top of that, your Synergy bonus from Leap is going to apply to that AOE damage as well. So just to very quickly give you an idea, let me show you what the damage looked like on Leap Attack, and then consider the fact that they're going to increase it and add your Synergy bonus. So we'll swap over to D2 Planner, Look at the Barbarian. And then we'll go ahead and put in 20 points to Leap and 20 points to Leap Attack. So at skill level 20, Leap Attack applied a 178 to 188 physical damage AOE effect every time you land it. This number is going to be increased. And then in addition to that, you'll see that Leap gives a 15% damage bonus per level. So at level 20, that's 300% additional damage. So just with the changes that are here right now, you should be able to assume that Leap Attack, even at only skill level 20 with full synergy, is going to be doing a minimum of 600 damage potentially. And I think that that number is actually going to get a lot higher. Depending on how they apply this, it might actually be kind of bonkers. So stay tuned. Uh, we do have a Leap Attack Barbarian Guide coming out on Max Roll that already was abusing a lot of the very interesting mechanics that were available for Leap Attack, and this should only make it that much more viable. Fire Golem looks like it's just getting an overall damage bump to the Holy Fire damage and to its melee attack damage. I don't think it's going to be significant enough, but it goes a long way uh, to apply a balm to some of the burns of having the Holy Fire skill range decreased when they initially buffed it for the start of the PTR. So Holy Fire's original implementation made it so that you got double your tick damage if you were in melee range, and then it would decrease down to 100% of your normal damage at max radius. Now, there was a huge uproar of whether or not this was OP or too strong or what it meant for the game and development, but it looks like it is reverted back to that original form, and we're getting the halfway mark 
between synergy damage bonus increase. So it's not as strong as it was before, but it's not as weak as it originally was. We're kind of getting a halfway margin there. Either way, this makes it so that that dual dragon, holy fire, uh, hand of justice paladin is definitely back on the menu for people who want to play that way. And there are interesting implications for the teleporting sorceress that maxed out fire mastery and lightning mastery and then blew up the screen with some AOE effects like that. Whether or not this is too OP is definitely up to interpretation, but we will be able to play this in patch 2.4, so it's probably going to be very relevant for your uh, Paladin leveling in late game potential. Other things that might not seem as interesting, but have a lot of impact on people that like to play the game in different ways. One, legacy graphics are now going to be able to emulate both Sven's Glide Wrapper and Glide Wrapper Plus. Uh, for people who didn't play original LOD, there was basically a small installation of additional files and then a change to how the game used its different uh, different graphics engine to make the game cleaner, sharper, and to give it some additional functionality as well as locking your controller to your screen rather than having it go anywhere outside of your screen's resolution. That was all Glide Wrapper. And it looks like we are now going to get a Glide Wrapper Plus. So legacy mode on graphics might be looking super crispy clean. I'm definitely interested to see just how good that looks, considering there's a lot to be said about just how nostalgic and awesome the original game looked. Very small thing, but typically when you die, your minimap closes. Now it'll stay open. Eh, saves you a button click, but it's kind of nice. Here's the big change. So I want to pull it up so that you can see it here. This is massive, and I think there's a question being asked about dodges, but we'll get to that later. Blocking will no longer interrupt a player while performing a skill or attack. What does that mean? So for people who don't know, your skills and attacks all have an animation, and your increased attack speed or faster cast rate, etc., etc., make that animation take less time. But if you're unaware, your skill has an animation, but when the skill happens, occurs somewhere in the middle of that total animation. So to give you an idea, if you've ever played a Necromancer and cast Clay Golem, you'll notice that when you right click, Clay Golem immediately gets summoned. That's occurring on something called the action flag. The action flag is a hidden breakpoint in your animation length that says when you get to this point, do the action. Whereas teleporting occurs somewhere around the middle of your animation. So if your animation is 10 frames long, around the fourth or fifth frame, you'll actually teleport and then you'll finish your animation. This change makes it so that if you were to block before the action flag, you will no longer interrupt your animation with the block animation and thus negating your skill or attack. And you will instead still negate the attack and your skill will go off or your attack will go off. Now, after the action flag, I assume that you can still be interrupted. But in most cases where you're on a max block build, your block animation is probably going to be either similar or shorter to the end of your animation length. What does this mean? Werewolf druids can now go max block even on a fury build because you'll be effectively uninterruptible. If before your attack goes off, you cannot be interrupted by block and you still get the benefit of blocking, your attack goes off and then you're into your second really fast attack, third, fourth, etc. They also went to say later on that there was a bug fix where dodges and evades could also interrupt skills when that wasn't intentional. So I assume, even though it's not spoken about here, that we're going to need to test whether or not dodging and evading on the Amazon also gives you a hidden animationless evade and you still get to get your skill to go off. We'll need to test that, but just based off the wording, that's what I'm thinking is happening. Uh, there were quick cast inconsistencies and inefficiencies on left click. There were issues that people reported and I asked people in chat because I was a little foggy about what this change meant, where if you were quick casting on left click and then you began to target something that you weren't previously, it would cause your cast to stop. If something died while you were quick casting and then you were no longer having a target, it would stop. But it looks like they have unified that and simplified it so that your left click and right click quick casts are going to work the same. And a lot of those inconsistencies and interruptions are gonna go by the wayside. So hopefully we're going to have a much cleaner gameplay experience while quick casting. Massive, massive change. They fixed the mana burn bug. What does that mean? When you had a monster that had the elite affix mana burn, when they would deal damage to you, the amount of mana that they would remove, 
used to undergo a multiplication by 255. So basically a regular monster hitting you in melee would basically drain anyone's mana pool down to zero. Supposedly that is now fixed. I'll wait to see it to believe it, but that makes a lot of builds just so much better. It makes Whirlwind so much better. It makes Energy Shield builds so much better. It makes any melee class like Zealer or Jabazon, Martial Arts Assassin. This is a massive, massive quality of life change, and it's going to go a long way to make those melee builds and some higher end high FCR builds more viable and more consistent in their ability to handle situations in different farming areas. Here's something that's interesting, and I don't know necessarily what it means for the total impact on especially the Act 5 Mercenary, but take this, take this into consideration. They have fixed Mercenary Damage UI, so the Mercenary character screen's damage value should be fixed, they should be showing more appropriately, and then in addition to that they said that they fixed some of the Mercenary bonus damage, which was inappropriately applying uh, different bonuses to it. Act 5 Frenzy Mercs might need to equip more than one weapon to get their damage bonus, unlike what it was like in the PTR. Merc damage might not undergo as many multiplications that it currently does, especially on Act 5 Mercenary. Or it could just be that your weapon damage will show the appropriate amounts of enhanced damage and off-weapon enhanced damage that your Mercenary now has. And if that's the case, I just have one question. Can we please fix the Lion character screen? Just, just a couple... There's just a couple things, a couple defense and block chance and attack rating and damage values that don't necessarily calculate appropriately. They made it so that you could shift click items from the stash into your belt. But for some reason, they made it so that when you had a scroll on your belt, so having a teleport scroll or a scroll of identification on your belt, which is typically something that people will implement when they are filling the entirety of their inventory with magic find on really high end holy grail magic find characters. Shift clicking from a, like Akara to buy more scrolls wouldn't fill your belt. You had to put them there individually and it looks like that's fixed now. So that's like literally saving four or five seconds per farming route, depending on the class that you're playing and whether or not you're going for that super high min maxed magic find character. Just a nice quality of life improvement, considering we used to have it and it got taken away. And then the last thing, the little, the cherry on top, boop. For some reason they made it so that lower res didn't show you how much resistance it removed on the skill. So I either had to go to something like D2 Planner to see the values or just memorize them. Now it'll show on skill. So all the necromancers running around will actually know how much they're helping out their team and increasing their damage, as opposed to having to guess before. A lot of good changes. I'm really excited for Leap Attack, Blade Fury, the Whirlwind quality of life, and then my own, oh, and of course, Mana Burn. My only real issue is that I at least am personally on the side of the fence that says that the Paladin Holy Aura damage boost, and I put out a whole video about this, and if you really want to watch my breakdown of why I think it's unhealthy for the game, not that it's overpowered, but that's unhealthy for the game, you can go ahead and watch it. I think. There's a different way to implement this. Have it so that within a three yard radius around the character, you get increased damage. So that these Holy Fire and Holy Freeze and Holy Shock and Sanctuary Aura builds are getting a benefit and are speeding up melee uh, character clear speed without propagating this kind of gameplay style where you literally don't have to click buttons. But I know that that conversation has basically been beaten to the ground as far as it is. But I'd love to hear what you think about all of these changes. I'm incredibly excited for them, and I'm super looking forward to sinking my teeth into it and testing it all and making sure it all works the way that it should the moment that this patch goes live. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next ladder season.